In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to do a quick rig for a backpack. This backpack was simply modeled out of a cube. Just did some pushing and pulling of vertices and some extrusions, and then I extruded the straps out of the top here. An important thing to note about this backpack, the way I've constructed it, is that the straps at the bottom here don't actually connect to the rest of the geometry down here. I've left them open so that it's possible for the straps to move a little bit uh, freely if we wanted them to. Okay, so getting started with this, one of the things that we just want to make sure is that our backpack sits nice and symmetrically placed on the at the origin, um, that it is basically you know right at zero more or less evenly placed. And starting from the side view here, I'm going to go through and create some joints. So we'll go into the rigging menu set, go to skeleton, create joints, just check our options. Our default options should be fine if I just reset the tool. And then we're just going to create a few basic joints for the inner part of the bag. Just make sure that shading x-ray joints is on. Make sure that I'm showing joints here as well. I am. Good. So I'll go in and I'll start toward the base here. I'll create a joint right about here. We'll create another one midway up. I'll hold down shift while I do this. Maybe just start it over here a little bit more. Shift, and then I'll create one right here at the top. All right, um, so that just creates our basic joint chain to begin with. And then I'm gonna to wanna to create a separate joint chain for each of the straps. So I'm just gonna hit enter there to complete my joints. I'm going to hit Y to repeat my last tool, which is the Create Joint tool. And I'm going to go in here now and create the layout for the straps. So I'm just going to start right where the strap attaches. I'm going to keep the joints fairly short to begin with, and or the, the distance between them fairly short to begin with. And I'm gradually going to sort of let that expand as I go along here. So I'm not having a specific length that I'm choosing, but up there in that, that area where there's a lot more uh, rotation, I'm sort of defining it a little bit better with some extra joints down here where it's a little bit straighter. Uh, this can still bend, but I don't necessarily need the joints to be so far apart, or so so close together, rather. So something like that, and maybe a final joint right there toward the tip at the end, and that should be good. Okay, so that defines a basic layout there, but we also need to go in and take a look at it from the, from the uh, top view or the side view, because as we look at this here, if we look for joints, you can see that they're not really following the strap there. So what we'll need to do is to, um, let's to bring them over onto this side here. Let's just kind of line them up. And then I'm going to, we, starting at the origin of the strap joint, I'm just gonna rotate that over until my next joint is kind of sitting in the center. I'll hit the down arrow to move down one joint, and I'll just kind of continue doing that process as I rotate these joints to sit as close to the center of those uh, of the strap as possible on, on the way down. Um, as we continue on here, let's just see. Rotate back a little bit. That might actually re require a little bit of rotation in X there. That's fine. And that's pretty close. That's close enough, really, for us. We don't. This does not have to be super, like, specific. Um, I think that most of that's going to work. We might. I might even want to maybe rotate that up there a little bit. Rotate this back down. Take a look at it from the side view. I probably get a little bit better um, visibil visuals about what I'm doing. So pull that down there, and then maybe one of these can rotate a little bit more there. Um, trying to get everybody in line. It's one thing when you draw it from one angle, but then when you have to like get it working in three dimensions, it takes a little bit longer to just get perfect. This one here at the end, I don't usually like to move my joints, but I'll just grab this one and move it down. It'll be easier. Right at the end, it probably won't make much difference. Okay, so that looks pretty good overall. Maybe just move this in the world, just over there slightly. I think that'll be fine. This is, uh, I'm not too worried about moving the joints, I guess, because this is not going to be a um, like super complex rig or a character where we can get into trouble if we do that. So that's all good. Um, 
What I will do though is I'll go through each one of these joints and just uh, freeze its transformations. So I'll go to modify freeze transformations. And that way it will freeze out the rotates at the very least. See if the freeze transformations is, yep, it's set to all of them. So it's not freezing out the translates, but that's okay. I want to freeze out the rotates. And I'll just uh, do that several times. So just hit that G to repeat the last command on each of those joints. Just make sure that they have all been frozen. And the last two here. Good. Okay, cool. So that's in place now. Let's just go and parent these two together. Okay, so click and click and then parent, P to parent. Um, and now let's go ahead and select the base of those controls. And in fact, actually, before we do that, to save ourselves a little bit of time, let's go in and name our joints. So this bottom joint here, we'll call this um, bag bottom CTR, uh, bottom J and T for joint. And we'll call this bag mid joint and bag top joint. And then for our straps, we'll go through and we'll call that our strap left 01. And I'll work my way down progressively. Each of these is now going to be strap left 02 and so on, so on, so forth. So I'll just pause the video while I do that. Okay, so now you can see I got 1 through 12 there. With this, let's go back to our bottom joint and let's go and mirror these joints over. So we'll go to skeleton, mirror joints, options. Uh, we're going to mirror this across the x, y axis. Um, and we're going to search for, search for underscore l underscore and we'll replace that with underscore r underscore so that these all become right instead of left. There we go. So now we have these. Actually, we have the same, I think it created the same ones from the beginning. Oh, you know what? I didn't need to do grab it from the uh, base. We'll just grab it from the top here. Apologies. Grab it from there. Do the same thing. There we go. That'll give us just the ones that we need. There's the strap rights. Otherwise, I was duplicating the, uh, the, the midline joints there, which I don't want to do. All right, so we got our strap left, we got our strap right. All those joints are created there. Perfect. And now we can go through, and I'm just going to go and save this real quick. Um, let's just have a quick look at what this behavior would give us if we were to do um, just some basic rotations. Uh, this is just going to be a real quick demo kind of um, skinning. So I'm just going to click the base joint and click the bag. Let's go to skin, bind skin options, make sure that joint hierarchy is selected, closest distance, classic linear, max influence is three. It's all good. Click bind skin. Now this is not going to look very nice to begin with. Um, if I rotate from the base joint, everything should come along with it. The mid joint, we're going to start seeing some weird crushing going on. Um, but what I'm more concerned with is what's going on with like over here. So ultimately what we will see is that if we, if we go into the uh, paint skin weights tool, um, we'll see that there is not exactly the right amount of control down here for the, the bag versus the straps. So just to kind of like make things a little bit easier to understand, um, I'm going to go through and just make sure that the, all the weight for this first joint is applied to the bottom of this bag, but not to the straps. To do that, I'm going to go into vertex mode. I'll turn off joint selection just to be safe. Um, and let's just create, I was going to grab a selection around this sort of midline here. So it's like all of these vertices just in the middle. But I also want to get rid of any of the influence coming onto these straps. So let's make sure we use control selection there to get rid of the, the strap vertices. All right, good. Get rid of that strap vertice there. And two, two, two. Should be all gone there as well. So we only have the bottom of the bag selected now. All right, so what we can do is go into um, shift right click. We can go into, or is it shift left click? I 
I have a tool set up for myself over here. I never remember where I have to go to actually get it. Uh, we'll just go back to the rigging menu set. We can go to skin, paint skin weights. It is right there. That one is where you want to go if you don't know where it is. Paint skin weights tool opens it up there. I just have a little button here that does that automatically. Um, so with the bottom joint selected, we'll go to replace, set the opacity and value to one and hit flood. Now, all these vertices here will be exclusively controlled by the rotation of this joint. Also, let's go in and grab just the vertices with those straps. So if I hold down control and click and drag around this area, actually hold on, sorry, shift to click and drag around that area, apologies. What I'll do is I'll deselect the currently selected joints and I will select the ones that weren't selected. So that's like selecting the straps. And I have to go and use control to get rid of the rest of these ones. That's fine, that's easy. Sure I don't have anything sitting there that I don't want. No, it's good, just the straps right there, that's cool. Um, and let's go ahead and take that paint skin weights again. For these, we want to paint that those skin weights to, let's say, this joint right here. So that's joint right uh, that's for this one, it's joint 11. Um, I don't want to flood it because if I do that, it's going to flood both sides. So I'm just going to keep my replace uh, on. I have a big brush right now. Just hold down B and click and drag to sort of make that brush a little bit smaller. And then I'm just going to paint right on there for just those vertices. Because it's just those vertices selected, only those vertices will actually be painted. So we have a little bit of a drop off there up to the next vertex, uh, but that's fine. And that's good. Let's come over here and do it to this side as well. Shift, uh, sorry, basically right click here, choose select influence, do the same thing. Make sure that they all look 100% white there. There we go, cool. Great, now let's just do a little test. If I rotate, I turn my joint selection back on and Rotate this, okay, that's rotating as I would expect. If I rotate this, okay, those are going in. See that they're not being controlled by this joint anymore. All right, cool, so that's what I would expect. That's just kind of make things a little bit easier for us as we go into the next step. Next step is going to be where we create um, some additional IK control that goes through here to help make the movement of these straps a bit easier. So we'll take a look at that in the next video.